Coming up on Studos America, the glorious day is finally upon us. Andrew Cuomo is officially out as New York governor. Tonight we celebrate the future while mourning those Cuomo left behind. Who better to be on the program today than Janice Dean? She'll join us and we will have a wonderful, wonderful show as we do the end of Cuomo. seeing those words on the screen for the first time and that made me really happy. The end of Cuomo is here. And what better way for this entire saga to come to its at least temporary end than for us to learn that Andrew Cuomo can't take care of his dog. Yes, he's a terrible person in so many ways and he hates his puppy too. This is from the Albany Times Union. As Cuomo packed his bags and sent his belongings to his sister's house, he left something very important behind, his dog. Instead, Cuomo asked staff if they wanted to take care of the canine. Now, look, is this story true? I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's true. It came from state police sources. Could be true. I mean, of course, Cuomo is denying it. He sent out a tweet about this and said some people just can't get the facts straight. Yes, I was downstate monitoring storm response for a few days, but Captain, that's his dog, and I are a man and his dog. He is part of our family and that's the way it will always be. And he shows a picture of him with the doggy, with the beautiful daughters, and he's just giving a little love to the dog. What a cute little puppy you are. I mean, you have to say that's a nice little moment. And if if we can trust anything in this world, I think we've all learned that we can always trust the story behind Andrew Cuomo's scandals. Whatever he says is true. If Andrew Cuomo says it and he's talking about one of his personal scandals, you know, whatever he says is true. And that was something that I think we all believed until like 10 seconds later, when our friend Janice Dean pointed out, Cuomo tweeted out a staged picture taken in People magazine from 2020, saying he didn't leave the dog behind. He is a serial liar, among other things. So no, I don't believe him. Captain deserves better than this guy. <laughs> she even uh, tweeted a copy of Cuomo's tweet from back then. It was on Cuomo's account. It was a picture from People when he was trying to act like he was the really good governor that he never was. Really, really amazing. What an amazing day. Let me give you a couple things here. I got this from uh, my, my friend Glenn Beck. Uh, the day that Andrew Cuomo resigned. And it really means a lot to me. Yes, here it is. The framed still from CNN as Andrew Cuomo resigns. And that meant, it means quite a lot. I also have uh, this, this book here. This is uh, American Crisis. Uh, leadership lessons from COVID-19 and the pandemic. I'll just throw that over there because I don't care about that at all. But this I blew up. I blew it up big, everybody. Here it is, the resignation letter of Andrew Cuomo. You might think, hey, is the resignation uh, letter of Andrew Cuomo going to host the show tonight? Yes. Yeah, that's exactly who's hosting the show tonight. Uh-huh. You got it? I'm going to stand here. I'm just going to sit here and do the entire show behind this letter because I want you to celebrate this moment. It really is glorious, isn't it? Oh, uh, I think I'm going to blow this one. This one might go in one of my kids' rooms just so they can... Daddy, why is there a scary letter? I'm like, shut up, kid. Uh, basically, he stepped down, said it was a pleasure to serve, and that was basically it. Now, I will say, before he left, he got to a little bit of business. I wanted to make sure he got some last-minute business done, of course. <sighs> From the Daily Caller, Cuomo recommended for parole, convicted murderer and member of a terrorist organization, the Weather Other Underground, David Gilbert, on his last day in office on Monday. And it's weird because for most governors, what you do on your last day in office is you make some pardons. 
usually those people are, you know, your political connections, your buddies, you hook them up, maybe they had a little embezzlement, you give them a little pass, they get to go back to normal life in the Hamptons, right? That's what you do on your last day in office. The problem is, that's what Cuomo did in every day of his office. His entire governorship is filled with stories just like that. So what are you supposed to do on your last day other than pardon murderers? There's another speech, yet another speech from Andrew Cuomo. New York Post uh, summarized it well, the very idea that he would even presume to give a farewell speech as if he was some kind of beloved hero is a sign of his detachment from reality. And the speech lived up to that summary, I will tell you that. So let's give you a few clips from this speech. This came out yesterday before he resigned. It was a doozy, as you'd expect. There will be another time to talk about the truth and ethics of the recent situation involving me. Oh, okay, another time. But let me say now okay, that wait. when government politicizes allegations and the headlines time. condemn without facts, mm -hmm. you undermine the justice system. Oh. And that doesn't serve women and it doesn't serve men or society. I thought we were supposed to believe all women. When did that go away? Huh. Now we're undermining the justice system and it's not serving men or women if we jump to conclusions, which seems to be the entire approach of every other Democrat I've ever seen when a Republican is accused of something. But Andrew Cuomo doesn't want that standard that he himself propagated applied to Andrew Cuomo. No huge surprise there. Um, we, uh, we have a little bit more from Andrew Cuomo trying to defend himself from this part of the scandal. And again, it's just a part of the scandal. We're talking about the sexual harassment chapter in his crappy book. Of course, everyone has a right to come forward. Oh, that's nice. And you. we applaud their bravery and courage in doing so. You do? But allegations must still be scrutinized and verified oh whether made by a woman or a man I that thought is our basic justice system is it i understand that there are moments of intense political pressure mm. and media frenzy okay that cause a rush to judgment cause a rush. But that is not right it's not fair mm. or sustainable mm -hmm. facts still matter a mm. firecracker can start a stampede. Yeah. But at one point, everyone looks around and says, why are we running? Mm. The truth is ultimately always revealed. A couple of things here. Why do you applaud women for coming forward and lying? You're either innocent and they're lying, or you're guilty and they're telling the truth. Why would we applaud them if they came forward and they were lying? And using your analogy, you're running from a firecracker because you're what, scared? Why not fight it if you're so innocent? We've em embarked on the most aggressive green energy plan in the nation. Mm. Not talk, action. Oh, okay, what Hundreds are they? What do you got? projects all projects. across the state starting now. Starting New now. New transmission lines for a green grid. Ooh, green we are grid. rebuilding our upstate airports. Ooh. Buffalo is building back. Buffalo. A new LaGuardia Airport, first new airport in the nation in 25 years. <laughs> Why does he continue to say this? LaGuardia is not a new airport. It is not the first new airport in 25 years. LaGuardia opened in the 1930s. It is not a new airport at all. And even if you were to say, okay, well, he did some renovations, he's counting it as a new airport, even though it's not a new airport. Okay, fine. The airport in North Dakota, Williston, opened in 2019. I, I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand why you would lie about that. Everyone knows LaGuardia has been around for a long time. Everyone. <sighs> now, Andrew Cuomo also went after some of his predecessors and talked about how he was the first governor who really, you know, made a difference. We cannot go back to the old days mm. when government talked and government debated and government issued a lot of press releases about what they were doing. I remember that. But they never made a difference in people's lives. I remember that. And they never improved mm. and they never built. They never did any of those things. And now they do make a difference in people's lives all the time. They make it worse. But when you're talking about the old days, 
To remind you, Andrew, the only reason you got this job in the first place is because in the old days, your dad was governor. So, I mean, I thought he sucked too, but I'm surprised that you agree. Please don't forget what we learned together last year. Oh, God. And don't forget what we accomplished. Oh, what did you accomplish? We went from the highest infection rate in the nation to the lowest. Okay. We did what no one thought could be done. Mm, well. Why? Why? Because when the rest of the nation put their head in the sand. Oh. And denied science. Talk trash. And played to politics. The rest of the nation, really? We uh, faced up to the facts. And you, we made the tough but necessary decisions. You did that? And while our infection rate went down, mm -hmm. other states have been going up. And now the situation is reversed. New York has one of the lowest infection rates in the nation. Wait, reversed? And other states are seeing <laughs> rapid increases. <laughs> it's sweeping Florida, um, it's Texas, Florida Texas, Alabama, Alabama Arkansas, Arkansas, South Dakota, South Dakota and Dakota. more. So that's interesting. You notice the sleight of hand there. If you delete all of the dead people from the beginning of this, you know, when we were the worst case of, uh, in the entire nation, if you delete all of that, well, we're looking pretty good. You don't get to delete all of that. You do realize this. This guy is delusional. He still thinks to this day he did a better job than all of those states. So just to be handy, because I'm helpful, and this is a fun day for me because Andrew Cuomo is gone and out of office. I've decided to put all of the states he mentioned on a graph, and here it is. Gee, there's a very big blue line, uh, excuse me, a blue bar on the left. It goes up really, really high. This is deaths per million, so we're not worried about population differences here. You're seeing a very high bar uh, for New York. Shockingly, the guy who's bragging about his performance has the highest bar. Next is Alabama, then South Dakota, then Arkansas, Florida, and then below average for the nation, the state of Texas. Below average for the nation, the state of Texas. But he's talking trash to them. Huh. I will say there was one decent part of his speech. <laughs> and it kind of did make me laugh. It was Andrew Cuomo's final shot in the civil war against Bill de Blasio. Eric Adams will be the next mayor of New York City. I think he'll bring a new philosophy and competence to the position, which can give <laughs> New York City residents hope for the future. A new competence to the position. Uh, thinly veiled threat there and uh, attack against uh, Bill de Blasio. And that was kind of the only good part of the speech. I will say, here we are. Andrew Cuomo is no more. He's no longer governor and he's left in disgrace, at least for him, if you want to have a moment of solace for him, you want to have a moment of, of I don't know, feeling for this. This has been a long road. Maybe you have some emotional connection to Andrew Cuomo and you want to feel a little sad for him. He had those sad puppy dog eyes, not the dog that he kicked to the curb, but the sad puppy dog eyes that he had. At least he still has his Emmy. Oh no, a statement from the International Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. Oh no, the International Academy announced today, oh no that in light of the New York Attorney General's report, oh no, and Andrew Cuomo's subsequent resignation as governor, oh no, it is rescinding his special 2020 International Emmy Award, oh no. His name and any reference to his receiving the award <laughs> will be eliminated from the International Academy materials going forward. Oh no, I feel terrible for Andrew Cuomo. Cynthia Nixon, his former opponent in the gu gubernatorial race, tweeted this, the difference between me and Andrew Cuomo, neither of us are governor, but I still have my Emmys. <laughs> oh no. This man has terrorized New York long enough. He has terrorized America long enough. Good riddance for a bad person and an awful, awful governor. Andrew Cuomo is awful. Dot com.
But it seems like the type of day you want to have a wonderful treat, huh? Snack, maybe, something delicious, something chocolatey. Like a Built Bar, for example. Built Bars have great flavors like, uh, let's see, chocolate, uh, coconut, double chocolate, salted caramel, cookies and cream, mint, brownie. They have nine regular flavors. You can get them whenever you want. The rumor is there's a new pistachio one that's either out or coming out soon. Don't miss it. 18 grams of protein, 180 calories, 4 to 5 grams of sugar, 4 to 5 net carbs. The thing is, it's like a healthy bar, but they started with taste first. Made sure the taste was amazing, and then they made sure it was healthy too. Built.com is the place to go to get this. Built.com. Use the promo code STU15. You'll save 15% off your first order. The promo code is STU15 for Built.com. 15% off. Promo code STU15 at Built.com. On such a historic day as this, the first day in oh, way too long that Andrew Cuomo is not the governor of the state of New York, I'm absolutely thrilled to welcome Janice Dean to the program. She, of course, is the senior meteorologist for Fox News and the author of the wonderful book, Make Your Own Sunshine, inspiring stories of people who find light in dark times. Janice, welcome to the program. Cheers, my friend. <laughs> Cheers, Janice. Thank you so much. I, I love that you make such great use of the Andrew Cuomo is awful mug. I don't think anybody deserves to have one more than you. I know, but do we put Andrew Cuomo was awful <laughs> or is he still awful? I like it. That gives me a new chance to, send, to, to sell some more cups. So uh, <laughs> Andrew Cuomo was awful coming soon uh, to a merch store near you. Uh, Janice, um, I want you to take me back for a second because I've been dying to, to find out this story. Take me back to the moment that you find out Andrew Cuomo is actually stepping down. Yeah, I was, I was on my way home and he was giving a press conference. And, you know, had I known he was actually going to resign, I would have stayed at work because, <laughs> you know, I would have been on television right away, right? Mm -hmm. So I was listening uh, to him ramble on as usual and blame all of the victims and say that he's the victim instead of the actual women who had to, you know, be near his groping hands and his, you know, disgusting mouth. Mm -hmm. um, and all of a sudden, you could tell the conversation was shifting towards I want to do right by New York. I love New York, New York tough. And you could just tell that, oh my gosh, he's going down a different lane than he's been going down like for what, 12, how many years now? Would have been 11 years? Yeah, 10, 11 years, something like that, yeah. And I was tweeting the whole time because I remember I had put, okay, here's how it's going to go today. He's going to congratulate himself, blame everyone else, you know, never accept any responsibility for his behavior. And then I'm never resigning the end. And I actually tweeted that out. And so as he was going through this, I, I was like, oh my goodness, is he resigning? And lo and behold, he did. So I was shocked because even though I knew, you know, I, I don't think he could continue on down this road with all of the leaks and the newspapers going after him now. And, you know, even cable news and, and NBC, CBS, ABC, I knew that something was going to, had to give after that AG report. But the fact that, you know, he did on that day was shocking to me. Yeah, I was sort of shocked too. And it, it makes me, because I don't believe Andrew Cuomo could bring himself to actually resign. It feels like what he actually did was realize he had no way out. He realized that there was no chance he wasn't going to be impeached and removed. So he just did this to save himself, to make his life better, which seemingly is what, how he makes every decision. I don't think it was out of character the way he did it, but I was surprised he was able to realize that it, it was really over. Yeah. And then I thought to myself, after I was getting more information, he did a deal. He did a deal with Carl Heasty. Yeah. And Carl Heasty basically said, you don't have any options. And so, listen, if you resign, we'll stop the impeachment and we won't release all of the information that we have on you, right? Because that's the way it was going. I was so angry because not only did they stop the impeachment, but he also kind of said, well, then we, then we don't have to release any of the information that we got in the investigations. I was furious. So that's when I knew it was a deal that hey, they had struck. But then, you know, people were angry, not only in social media, 
Um, but everywhere, like, you know, the women were angry, obviously the families were angry because he was kind of, this was a soft landing for him. Um, but since then, you know, they're going to, they're going to apparently release the information. I don't think they're going to impeach him, unfortunately, which they should do because then he wouldn't be able to run again. Yeah. And it's funny. The Democrats seem to have reversed themselves on whether you can impeach people after they left office. I don't, I, that's a, a new opinion uh, seemingly on this one. Uh, I, I, I think that is true. I think the deal thing makes a lot of sense and it, 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 it gives him this chance for a, a soft landing with his $18 million where he can influence politics all over the state and the country. <sighs> Uh, and do all, God only knows what else to the American people. Uh, he is awful. There is no doubt about it. Uh, He's really awful. When you look back at this, you know, a lot of people say they feel almost unsatisfied because obviously these accusations were serious and it's important to make sure that this part of the multiple scandals gets, you know, gets, gets the attention it deserves. However, the way it went down seems to, you know, push to the background other scandals like the nursing home scandals that we've talked so much about. Do you feel like this is a good outcome? Do you feel that we'll ever get to the truth? I hope so. You know, I'm friends with Assemblyman Ron Kim. And if it weren't for him, I don't know that we would be, you know, where we are today because, you know, he's a Democratic lawmaker. He lost his uncle in a nursing home. And we have really been side by side and it has nothing to do with politics. It has everything to do with the fact that the governor, you know, threatened him and his family and said, I'm, I'm going to basically ruin you if you don't, you know, side with me. And so I've got him as an ally in a place that I don't know very well, Albany and, and, you know, lawmakers. Right. And he assured me that he would continue uh, to rally on behalf of, the over 15,000 families that want answers when it comes to nursing homes. Not only that, you know, his $5.1 million book deal, the fact that he used state re resources for friends and family COVID tests when nursing homes couldn't get any. There was the, of course, the blanket immunity that he gave to nursing homes right after he issued that March 25th order. So I feel with an ally like Ron Kim, who is very passionate, um, I, you know, I think you know, there's some cages that are going to be rattled. And listening to Kathy Hochul today, who has taken over as the first female governor of New York, I, I'm a little hopeful. I'm hopeful. I'm going to hold her accountable too, though. You know, it's not over yet. Just because the guy exited stage left doesn't mean I'm not going to continue to shout from the rooftops. And she's not going to get away with it either if she just kind of tries to shove things under the rug. I think it's going to be really tempting for lawmakers there, though. They, they took a big step, they would say. They, you know, they pushed him out of office. He's gone. This is just going to bring attention back not only to Andrew Cuomo and the things that he did wrong, but the people who agreed with him, the people who were there cheering him on in public, saying he was doing a great job, telling the people of New York that he was mm -hmm. um, uh, 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 he was running a master class as to how to respond to COVID-19. I think part of the reason why this was pushed to the background is because so many of those same people uh, are in some way responsible for this. They, they allowed it to go on and didn't call it out until much, much too late. Absolutely. But I feel like it's happening. The fact that they <laughs> took his Emmy away today. Yes. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm very excited about that. I mean, just, I, you know, I was thinking about this today, Stu. Yeah. I remember when it was announced that he was getting an Emmy Award. And of course, this was after we found out he was writing a, a memoir in the middle of a pandemic and mm -hmm. people can't have funerals or wakes for their loved ones. And he's getting an Emmy Award. And then I fast forward to today. It was almost worth it. The fact that he got that stupid award <laughs> and it was it was taken away from him. That's true. I hadn't thought about it that way. I'm really glad he got that award now. Because Me too. It was much better than just not getting it. The fact that he got it and it was taken from him is so, so good. It's so much closer to justice in it, some ways. It way. truly is. Today was a good day, I have to say. When yeah. I saw that, because I've been, you know, I've been shaming the Emmy Awards because I, you know, you're starting to see on social media the lead up to the, the this year's Emmy Awards. And I'm like, yeah, you should take back Andrew Cuomo's Emmy. He's terrible. Uh, he's awful. Hmm. And uh, and it happened today. So, I, 
you know, I'm hopeful. I was, this is a hopeful day today. Yeah, no, it, it really is. I mean, I, take yourself back to, to March, 2020, April, 2020. All of these things are going on. He's being praised as, remember, he was the guy who was gonna substitute for Joe Biden on the presidential ticket because he was so incredible. And if Joe Biden were to falter, they were gonna easily just throw in Mar uh, Andrew Cuomo because he was so great and did such a great job. From that moment, you know, a little over a year later, he went from a 72% approval rating to out of office. Did you think anything like this was even possible when this all started? No. I mean, but it was day by day for us, right? Because every day that I went out there was, you know, my stomach would be in knots. I, you know, this is not my wheelhouse. I don't love being in the middle of a political storm. I'm the one that forecasts the storms. Mm. So it was difficult for me, but I had to kind of take it in baby steps. Like, okay, today I'm going to tell my story. And now I've got more information. The fact that he's covering up the numbers and I'm seeing a few more reports and let's put that out there. I, I didn't think ahead. I, I just kept saying, well, if I don't speak out, who's going to? And from there, it was like bit by bit, I would see more people getting on social media. And then, you know, in December, uh, Lindsay Boylan, one of the, the women who came forward, she, you know, started to get active on social media and talk about her experiences with him as a, as a harasser and abuser. So it was kind of like, I stood up and then all of a sudden there were more people standing up with me. And so that's when I felt a little bit more confident. And now here we are today and I've done things I've never thought I would ever do, be it rallies with Ron Kim, Democratic rallies, uh, you know, talking about change in government. It's quite something what's happened this past year. I've said many times that I think you're the single most important person in all of this. I don't think this would have happened without you. And, uh, you know, I, I, your strength throughout this has really been, I think, inspiring to a lot of people. And I think a lot of people who might stand up and try to do something like this, which is sort of maybe against their normal day to day activities, um, would look at this and say, it, it's just not going to work. I'm going to do, I'm going to put all this effort. I'm going to put myself out there. I'm going to take all these risks. I'm going to take a beating in the media. I'm going to take a beating on social media. People, friends might turn against me. And they just say like, it's just not worth it. I'm never going to make a difference. I, I think you are real proof here that that's not true. What, what do you, why do you think that's, that, that, uh, that happened? I mean, it, why, why were you able to be successful in this? because I had the truth on my side and I had my store, my family story and I had the angels beside me. That's how I did it. You know, I'm not, like I said, a political person. If I do, you know, dip my toe into politics, it's because I have skin in the game or I have experience with something. You know, my husband is a, a firefighter, FDNY 27 years. And what's going on in Afghanistan, you know, is close to us because he's a survivor of 9-11. So if I'm going to get into uh, something online or in, on social media, I better know what I'm talking about. And so with the nursing homes, I knew what I was talking about because I was a grieving, you know, sister-in-law, daughter-in-law. I was a grieving wife. And it was important to me for my family to fi find answers. And that's, that's how I, you know, went there in, in a position that I'm still not comfortable in, but that's why it's important for people to stand up and speak up. And I think more people need to get into government that have personal stories like this, you know, small business owners, people who want to make a change, because I'm sick of the Andrew Cuomo's, you know, the, the legacy politicians, the ones that have been in the, you know, in the mansions their whole life, and they expect, you know, service and people to hold doors for them. I want people who really want to see change on a grassroots level to start running, uh, you know, for office. And no, I'm not going to be running for governor. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, you know, I have a new found love for people who want to do it for the right reasons. Yeah, no, I, I at one point in Cuomo's uh, farewell address, he said, you know, uh, the public service is the family business where I come from. And uh, it made me want to just vomit. 
I couldn't. He is in tall. I am really happy I'm not going to see any more press conferences, at least for a little while. I feel like he's at least going to go somewhere and hide for a few months before he starts taking those millions of dollars and doing damage with them. Um, before we, we leave here, Janice, was this worth it for you? Are you done? Hmm. My husband asks me that on a regular basis. So are you done now? <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think he does it because he's worried about me. You know, like he, yeah. I, I have health issues. I know you and I have talked about this. I, I live with multiple sclerosis. Um, you know, I have two young kids. I work early hours. So for him to ask me how long you're going to do this for is more because he's a concerned husband. But man, I'm going to continue to do it because the work is not done yet. We need uh, them to release the investigation, what the information that they have. We need some answers. We need accountability. A resignation is not accountability. Uh, and I'm going to be on this new governor, you know, and, and she needs to she needs to do right by me before I stop. Mm. Janice Dean, senior meteorologist at Fox News and one of my favorite people. Be sure to pick Aww. up her book, Make Your Own Sunshine, Inspiring Stories of People Who Find Light in Dark Times. Janice, we'll be keeping up with everything you do. And thank you so much for coming on and, and doing this and, and letting everybody at The Blaze know uh, what the truth is, because I don't know what we would have done without you. Can I tell you, I'm so grateful to you and Glenn and The Blaze because you guys helped give me a platform and a voice. And I will be forever grateful for that. You, sir, from the very beginning, you know, I was I was watching your reports and 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 knowing that, you know, the truth was on our side. So I thank you. Janice, thank you so much. And, and it's great to see you again. Mwah! <laughs> Oh, hello. Hi. Welcome to Andrew Cuomo is awful. Get out of the mansion day. It's a good day. A good day. Every once in a while, something like this happens where someone who is absolutely awful is held accountable. And I don't know that he's been fully held accountable, but at least he's out of our faces. Uh, I want to go through a couple things we've been kind of holding for a while here on the Andrew Cuomo uh, train here. This is... Um, this is a poster. I think I showed this the other day. When he actually resigned, I showed this poster. I, I actually bought it. Um, well, it was sent to me at least. Um, it is a signed Andrew Cuomo is awful. Well, it's Andrew Cuomo, <laughs> New York tough uh, poster. And I was always fascinated by this poster because what kind of terrible person releases and sells a poster to celebrate their own accomplishments in the middle of a pandemic in which you've performed terribly by any metric? And I thought it was kind of a fascinating thing because I just couldn't understand why anyone would do it. Do we have a picture of the full poster here? Here's the full poster. And this is what it looks like. And I thought we would do a couple things here. Go through some of the things that are on the poster. And then I want to tell you a very strange thing I noticed about the coverage overall. The way he's talked about this poster. And he seems to be trying to do something here that I think is really strange. So follow me here for a second. Here's the, um, let me go and show you a couple of the things here on the actual poster. This one is perhaps the douchiest part of the poster. Here it is. This is Andrew Cuomo in his car hanging out, for some reason, the passenger side window. <laughs> but I mean, what? Again, this is a thousand, tens of thousands of people are dead and you've made a poster of yourself with quotes uh, telling, talking about how truthful you were and illustrating yourself hanging out the passenger side for some reason of your car. Now, over to the other side is what we see, the boyfriend cliff. Now, what the hell is the boyfriend cliff? No one knows what the boyfriend cliff is. And when asked, they, journalists tried to figure out what exactly the boyfriend cliff was. No one knows. Eventually, the, the administration, the, the former, oh, that sounds good to say, the former Cuomo administration tried to explain that the boyfriend cliff was somehow a synopsis of his jokes he makes about his daughter's boyfriends that I guess he made in one of these press conferences he was being so praised for, which led him to, of course, write the book, make $5 million, and eventually uh, leave office. Um, then you have um, 
the make hand sanitizer. Now, this has been a classic on this show. This is like vintage Stu Does America going through Andrew Cuomo and his hand sanitizer commentary. Why? Because it is the cringiest piece of video you will ever see. And I want to bring you back. This is now early March. And he has decided, totally as a publicity stunt, to use hand sanitizer and make it with prison labor and brag about it. Watch. This is 75% alcohol. It also has a, comes in a variety of sizes. It has a very nice floral bouquet. Mm -hmm. Smelling your hands in the middle of a pandemic. Little I detect a lilac. Lilac. Hydrangea, tulips, what does it smell like to you? <laughs> and then he ends in the middle of a pandemic by putting his hand under someone else's mouth and nose so they can breathe it in. Brilliant. Uh, then you have uh, the Javits Center featured on his stupid poster. The Javits Center is interesting in that because Andrew Cuomo kept saying they needed millions and zillions and quadrillions of, of uh, beds and... Uh, and breathing apparatus and all of the things that he said they needed, which they actually didn't need, they had to turn the Javits Center into a hospital that they never really used. There was like two people who went inside of it. But he's bragging about it on his stupid poster. Then you have this. Then this is a little table he has at the bottom. And it says, New York State leads again. And it has four people there. What's interesting is the one all the way on the right hand, on uh, your right, on their left hand side, is Melissa DeRosa, called Magnificent Melissa. That is the woman who resigned from office because she was so despondent about the future of the administration and was really, I mean, she was her, his right hand woman. Uh, I guess when he had another woman in his left hand. <laughs> But his right, his right hand woman who really helped him through this whole crisis. And when she bailed on him, we knew the end was near. And uh, so she's get, she gets a little spot on the poster. Then down on the bottom, I love this part. This is probably my favorite part. This is probably my favorite part of the entire poster. Here it is, the very bottom. Remember, this is, th think of the time period. Uh, New York goes through this big rise, then a fall. And at the very bottom, he puts up arrows for Arizona, Texas, and Florida to basically talk trash to southern states as they're going through the pandemic because he's mastered it. Of course, later on, he would cases would rise higher than they ever were before. And he has it near the sea of division as if he's the uniter as he's calling out the states and trying to dunk on people dying in southern states. What a douche. How about this one? Donald Trump up on the moon. Oh, he's a crazy moon dreamer saying all sorts of crazy things like it's just the flu. How could Donald Trump say something like it's just the flu? Hmm. We have more people in this country dying from the flu oh. than we have dying from coronavirus. I forgot about that little clip. Did you? I sure did, too. And then, of course, this last part. Let me give you this. The winds of fear. This is something he said all the time at the beginning. It's not a pandemic of a virus. It's a pandemic of fear. Fear is more is worse than the virus. He said that over and over again. And this is what people remember. He made me feel good. He was assuring. He was assuring by telling you nothing was happening. He was telling you, you could go to work and you could get on your subways and nothing was going to go wrong. And then on the top, he also has a plane basically dunking on the Europeans because it's the Europeans fault for bringing it. It wasn't China because that's what Donald Trump was saying. So he decided to blame Europe and the Europeans. And I will say his Italian brothers and sisters. Andrew Cuomo, legitimately terrible. The worst poster I've ever seen in my life. But one quirky thing about it is going to drive you nuts if, if you're anything like me. We're back with it in a second. Andrew Cuomo is awful. Dot com. It's Andrew Cuomo is gone day here on Stu Does America, looking at this terrible poster that I got. Uh, he was trying to celebrate his COVID victory. And I want to give you a couple more things here. This is what Andrew Cuomo said about this terrible, terrible poster. Over the past few years, I've done my own posters 
hmm, that capture that feeling. I did a new one for what we went through with COVID, and I think the general shape is familiar to you, and the shape, of course, is the mountain. But the wording is so weird here, and it caught me when I first heard it. I did a new one. I've done my own posters. What does that mean exactly? Is he trying to say that he's the artist of these posters? Is he taking credit for this? I assumed they were just selling a crappy poster made by somebody else, but listen to the way he's talking about this. I think he's trying to make it sound like he actually drew or painted the art, the art here. He's trying to say that he's the artist. Listen. I use so many words. What if somebody said, okay, no words. Paint me a picture. Paint me a picture. That tells the story of what you're trying to say. That's poster art. Okay. And it's helped me because oh. it's been like a relief valve. A relief valve? Uh, not that I don't have joy every day dealing with you guys, but hmm. I could go and just use a different side of my brain. It's using another side of your brain? It's a relief valve? That's how you talk about painting when you're painting, right? Like, like that's, that's how way you describe releasing a poster for sale. That's how you describe when you're actually doing the art. It's a, in a mental release. It's, it's a using a different side of my brain. Listen, he does this all the time. Over the past few years, I've done my own uh, posters. I've done my on own. That capture that feeling. I did this one for I the state of the state. Did this one? Ship of state that was sailing in this sea of division, right? Uh, back in January. Well, in any event, so I did a new one. I did a new one? I did this one before? Huh? There's an awesome Washington Post piece entitled, Andrew Cuomo is touting a new pandemic poster. Artists call it an incoherent mess. So maybe he did paint it, right? However, in it, there's a link to an artist who says, folks, somebody had a great time making the latest Andrew Cuomo COVID poster, but the COVID mountain poster is not mine. I painted the three prior posters, including this 2020 poster featured here. Thanks for all the inquiries and the appreciation for the post for poster art at large. So wait a minute, this guy is saying he is the artist of the posters, except for this disaster COVID poster <laughs> that somebody else did. Why is Cuomo saying that he did it? Was, is it a, he said he had a, a relief valve. He had a mental release. He was using another part of his brain to tell someone else to paint a poster. Why would anyone, by the way, want to take credit for this abortion of a poster? I think Andrew Cuomo is trying to steal credit for terrible art. And I've been fascinated by this for a while now. I also have some very sad news to go along with the story. The very progressive poster artist for Governor Cuomo is now retweeting stories, ripping Cuomo for hypocritically requiring sexual harassment training while actually harassing women. And perhaps, oh no, the saddest turn in this saga for the governor. Here it is from the artist that made his posters. I made three posters for the governor. It was a feather in my hat at the time to have such a high profile gig and an opportunity to promote lofty ideals. And I'm calling on Andrew Cuomo to resign. When you've lost the artist for your own propaganda posters, what else could be left? You know, when I got this poster, it was pr prom promoted to me as a signed poster by Andrew Cuomo. And then I looked really close. And if you can look really close, you could tell it's right here. It's totally just printed on there. Even the signature of Andrew Cuomo is a fraud. Unbelievable. Thank you for joining me on this wonderfully long saga. Remember one thing, America, Andrew Cuomo is awful.com.